everyone, my name is Aubrey Nowiski and I'm the proud founder and board director for the Student Event Planners Association. Thank you all for tuning in to today's webinar. We're going to get started in just five minutes. I'm going to allow everyone to kind of get on the webinar. If you um, are joining, you can post any questions throughout the duration of the webinar on the actual event wall, and I'll be reading that for our guest speaker, which I will introduce in the next five minutes, so uh, get ready for that. If you are a member of SCPA, please note that you can receive credit for this webinar if you're a premium member. This webinar will be recorded and posted to our SCPA YouTube channel, so anyone can reference that at any time. And within the video library on the SCPA website, we'll be posting the corresponding quiz within the this week. So if you're a member of SCPA, you can take the corresponding quiz and earn credit for this webinar. If you're not a member of SCPA, we're so, so glad that you joined us today. And we know that you're going to get a lot of value out of today's webinar. We have a phenomenal guest speaker that you are all just going to love and adore. So with that, just a couple more minutes and we'll get started. All right. Also, I encourage you guys to introduce yourself on the event wall. So if you'd like to say where you're from and also if you're a part of a college or university, feel free to list what school you're part of or if you're part of a business, feel free to list that business name um, as well. So go ahead and introduce yourselves. And just to reiterate, in case you're just joining the call, my name is Aubrey Nowiski. I'm the founder and board director for the Student Event Planners Association. And we have a phenomenal, phenomenal webinar for today. I've got some of you messaging me um, about empowering millennials in the modern day workplace. I'm going to be introducing our guest speaker in just a few minutes and allow you guys some time to get on the call. Um, for our SCPA members, if you're a premium member, you can get credit by completing a corresponding quiz for this webinar. It will be posted in our video library within the fo following week. Um, this video will also be recorded and posted to our SCPA YouTube channel. So if you're not an SCK member, you can still reference the video after it's recorded anytime that you would like to. And we're going to get started in just a few minutes. I have you guys messaging me, getting all excited, so yay! <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. I feel like we need some hold music, like do. And also, once again, if you're not an SCK member, welcome, welcome. We're so excited to have you. <laughs> All right. Got some of our key leaders on this call. Welcome, guys. All right, just one more minute and we'll get started. Yes, Ronald, that is the correct place to post and welcome to the call. All right. I expect you to ask some good questions, Ronald, by the way. No, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> All right.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with today's webinar. We were so, so, so excited to have today's guest speaker. I honestly cannot speak highly enough about her. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce her and then we'll get started with today's webinar. So as a little bit of background information about Mary, she recently was selected as one of the top 25 young event pros to watch by the Special Event Magazine, which is a global magazine. She is passionate about education in the events industry and mentoring the next generation of event planners. Many of her very best apprentices and employees over the years have been SEPA members. So shout out. Woo -woo. So excited about that. <laughs> Her event planning career, believe it or not, though, started in commercial radio. So with over 15 plus years of experience in producing large scale events, concerts, and live broadcast events. Mary has worked at a handful of radio stations in Texas and later branched out to start the Simplifiers, which we'll talk about a little bit tonight, which specialized in event planning, non-traditional events with an edge, which included weddings, corporate, and social events, so the whole gamut. And as an undercover superhero, Mary has a passion for event planning and a knack for getting things done. Yes, she does. Every event she plans reflects her acute attention to detail from full logistic analysis to the very personal individual touches in the event decor. She believes no event should be cookie cutter and her personality reflects that same enthusiasm and excitement. She is only one of 400 worldwide who are CSCP certified, which stands for the Certified Special Events Professional. And in short, that basically means she really knows her stuff, okay? <laughs> um, she also currently serves as a director at large on the Board of Governors for the International Special Events Society, which is guiding the vision for the Educational Council for over 5,000 members worldwide in 53 chapters. Now, I just want to add on to that bio, just from a personal standpoint. I've known Mary, been honored to know Mary, since SEPA started when I was a college student, and she has been a huge role model and inspiration for me. She had the one of the best, really, event planning businesses in the Central Texas region. Everybody knew the simplifiers. They still know the simplifiers. And she had one of the most kick butt internship programs. That's not lip service. It was just, it was, you know, prestigious. It was something that was highly sought after, very competitive. Everybody wanted to work with this superhero, <laughs> Mary. So she's very, very well known, not only in the Central Texas region, but really internationally. And we were just so, so excited about our partnership, not only with Mary and the Simplifiers, but also the Apprentice Program. So I'm going to tell you really quickly um, a little bit about the company description for the Apprentice Program. So in short, we simplify the business of events via the Apprentice Program, which is a six-week online training solution for wedding planners to help train their millennial interns on the critical topics of wedding planning and how to think fast on their feet, which makes her just the best resource to talk about today's topic, millennial generation, how to work in the modern workplace. We are so, so excited to have you here, Mary. And also, as a, a, a little treat for our SEPA members, if you stay tuned to the very end of this webinar, we'll also be giving you a promo code to take advantage of the Apprentice Program if you are interning this fall. So without mm -hmm. further ado, Mary, thank you. Hooray, what is an introduction. Thank you so much. You can hear me, right? Gotcha, you're perfect. Okay. Fabulous. Um, well, I thank you guys for all being here, and I realize that there might be people from all over the U.S. on this call, which is kind of awesome. So you're all sorts of different time zones. Um, if you want to know what time zone it is where I'm at, <laughs> it's midnight. <laughs> so I promise you I'm not wearing my pajamas right now. Um, I'm actually calling from the U.K., and um, I will promise to stay awake through the whole call. That's, that, that is my, my bare minimum promise to you. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to some slides because it is super late here and it's much better to see, uh, I think, a PowerPoint than me right now. So let's take a look at uh, what I've got to pull together. And I also want to um, encourage you guys to write out questions as you come along. So um, if there are things that I'm talking about, I'm going over something too quick or not hitting on a topic in particular that you wanted to talk about um, with this, um, just let me know and we'll stop and go into it. So um, yes, and Aubrey will help me kind of field those questions. All right, so can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Exciting. Um, I also want to encourage you guys to um, tweet while you're watching this webinar. So uh, you can use the hashtag SEPA or um, also tag us 
either the simplifiers or apprentice program that's prgm um, when you tweet out so let's dive into it um i think that this is a really interesting topic because um you know, people will go, well, wait, why is this so important? And well, here's the reality of it. If you may or may not know these statistics, they might blow you away a bit. First and foremost, by 2020, millennials will form 50% of the global workforce. That's been done by a recent study of PricewaterhouseCoopers. So you guys are going to be half of the global workforce. And I think that the estimates for the states are even higher than that. Now let's break it down to the actual events industry. So there are 335,000 event planning firms just in the United States alone uh, right now. And that equates to about 8 million weddings that get planned every single year, just in the wedding industry, which is $12 billion. It's a huge, huge industry. Now, here's where this is so important to keep in mind. Most event planning firms are one to two person small businesses, which means that interns fuel those businesses. And so a lot of event planning firms work with, say, three to five interns every single semester to be able to handle the workload and really recruit from within um, the next generation of event planners that are out there. So are millennials important? Absolutely. And why is it important to empower them? We'll go right into this here next. So I'm going to go into five tips for employers first and talk about um, just some basic stuff that, that you need to know, you know, now that you've got this new generation of a workforce in, in your company um, and break it down. And then a little bit later, we're going to give you five tips for millennials on the other side of the coin. Um, and then also, again, come back to any questions and answers um, throughout the program. So here's the first one. Millennials want to believe in what you're building. And what that means is that they really want to know what's the purpose behind why your business even exists and what's the meaning behind it. So I preach this from day one and I think it's super important. If you as a company don't have a mission statement, a vision statement, or core values set out yet, this is something that you need to do A1, day one. Um, and it's so important because it, and it, it not only just to work with millennials, but just for yourself as a business owner, um, what is your mission statement as a company? Why do you exist? What, what mission are you carrying out in the events industry um, to better the world? Uh, now, a vision statement is all about where you're taking your, your company and your mission. So where do you see yourself and your company in the next three to five years? Who would you like to work with? What kind of an impact do you want to make on the world? And then core values are basically what is it that you believe in? Integrity, determination, wowing them with the little details, continued education, all of those things. If you can clearly and succinctly communicate those things to your team and really express what the company culture is, even if you're literally a one or two person company, it's important to have those things. And then interns or part-time employees or you know junior level folks coming into your company go, holy smokes, this person has got their stuff together. And they've got a vision for the future for how they're helping brides and grooms or corporate brands with their marketing activations, or whatever it might be. And you know, there was a survey that was done by Deloitte recently where six out of 10 millennials said that a sense of purpose was part of the reason that they chose to work for their current employer. So they really want to trust their leaders and they want a real personal connection to their work. So I think that's really important to kind of keep in mind um, with when working with millennials. The second thing is the need to know why. Um, and this may seem completely aggravating, but it's so important. When you assign tasks to uh, millennials, they really sometimes need to know the why behind it. So you might say, hey, um, Sally, can you just go organize the vendor um, filing cabinet full of flyers? She goes, what? What are you talking about? Why should we do that? It's a complete waste of my time. I could be on Instagram and posting three new things and blah, 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 blah. To you know, bring uh, traffic to our blog. She's thinking, why have you got me doing this mundane task? You might actually have a really good reason or you might not have a good reason and you just gave her some busy work. And then having that two minute conversation with her, you go, oh yeah, actually, you know what? 
doing the Instagram stuff might be a better use of your time and energy. So what I would suggest is that if there is an opportunity for you to really explain, even just quickly, one or two minutes, the why behind a task that you assign to them, trust me, it goes a long way. Now, here's three things to know about um, you know, being an event leader, and especially as an event planner. You can be an autocratic leader, a democratic leader, or a laissez-faire leader. Autocratic means do this, do this now, don't ask questions. Democratic is, hey, let's have a meeting and talk about it collectively about why we're doing whatever we're doing. And laissez-faire means a bit hands off and ah, do whatever you want to do. Now, you can be all three of those types of leaders at different parts of being uh, an event planner. So when you're on site at an event, you don't really have time to slow down and sort of talk about the why. Get it. Um, Democratic is typically great for pre-event, uh, you know, planning and, and designing times. And laissez-faire, you know, sometimes that works with certain personalities. So um, just a side note, you know, I realize that there are some times where you can't slow down and, and really tell them why. But if you can, one or two minutes really goes a long way. So the next one is millennials desire honest feedback from you and more than you think. Now, and this does kind of touch on a bit of a stereotype when it comes to millennials. And I'm going to squash a few of those stereotypes a little bit later. Um, but, you know, this generation is kind of tagged with, you know, knowing that their parents were what call, were called helicopter parents, people that sort of held on, held their hand. They got a trophy at every soccer game. They, you know, like they're, they're just sort of all over them all the time. And I want to say to, you, to this that that stereotype is not necessarily true. What they really want from you is for you to push them to work outside their comfort zone. Give them a task that's maybe a little bit bigger than that they can handle. Give them guidance and give them feedback, but let them go and do it. Um, great ambition. Um, they, they really have great ambition to do great things, and they just need you to push them along a little bit to um, give them the confidence that they can actually handle it. And what's really important is you got to give them space to make mistakes. Um, and here's a super important part of that. And I know that this is scary, especially for any event planners on the call. We are type A control freaks. <laughs> we don't want to let go of anything. We certainly don't want to delegate it to anybody else. Nobody else could do it as good as we do. That's what, we, that's what the little voice in our head is saying. But you know what? There's only so much you can do as one person that when you actually do delegate things off to your team and really give them ownership of it, you as a firm can accomplish so much more. Now, what's important is that if they make a mistake, they fix it, they own it, um, and they handle it. So you don't come in and say, oh, well, you messed that up. I'm going to go clean it up. No. You have to let them fix it and own it. And what's really important to know, and this is kind of cold hard truth, is that hand holding is not mentoring. So you, you by giving them just exclusively positive feedback, it doesn't help them. So I really encourage you to give them honest, constructive feedback. And this is going to sound a little silly, and I'm going to curse here like a sailor. But I have an, an analogy that I call the shit sandwich. So when you, you have to give somebody feedback that you're not really too, you're too nervous about giving it to them, here's what you do. The shit sandwich is that you start up with something positive. You put the kind of negative thing in the middle, and then you wrap it up in the end with something positive again. So what's great about that is that you, it's just a better way of communicating. So you're not going in and saying, Sally, you messed it up. Jeez, what are you thinking? You're saying, hey, Sally, I saw that you did a lot of great work on um, Danielle's wedding. And I just want to encourage you, can you look back at the timeline? I, I noticed on page three there was a couple of spelling errors. Um, you know, that'd be really great, Sally. It, if you could get that to me by, mm, I don't know, uh, by end of day today. And, you know, by the way, you're doing a really great job on our Pinterest board. Simple, authentic, genuine feedback like that. It doesn't take too long, but you start getting to a habit and a pattern of, of being able to do it. You'll notice that they'll respect you, um, you know, for it later. The next one is the old rules don't necessarily apply. Now, what I think, and this, this one challenged me a lot um, as a uh, supervisor of millennials and, and you know, uh, being sort of the, the, in that role, 
I want to have very strict office hours. Um, the office is open from 10 a.m. It closes at 6 p.m. These are the times our, our clients call us. And you know what I found was that that didn't really work a lot of times with my employees and with my interns. They wanted to work or text at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. Or, you know, sometimes they wanted to write a, a blog post at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, and it just really depends on their creative, um, you know, clock. And, and sometimes they work all around the clock. Um, so I would encourage you if you're from a different generation, and by the way, I'm technically Gen X, um, you know, that the, the rules that applied to you when you were in your early 20s starting out in the workforce don't necessarily apply to them in that um, if you can be a little bit more lenient on what your work hours are, as long as they get the job done, does it really matter? Um, and, you know, do they need to have a strict dress code at work? Um, yes, when clients are in, it's buttoned up, polished, and professional. But other times, is it that really necessary? So I encourage you to challenge what some of those rules that have been passed down to us from baby boomers and, and our previous bosses that may or may not really work for this generation. The next one is have them set personal career goals and let them own some of your firm's annual goals as well. I think this is huge. You really, from day one, want to understand what it is they want to accomplish with their own career and how you, as their mentor or supervisor, can help them accomplish that in your firm. Even if it's just literally a three-month internship, you can set goals. What do you want to accomplish in the next three months? How can I help you? How can I help you get there? Is there people that you would like me to introduce you to? Um, all of those things are, are great questions to ask them, and it really sets them up to be empowered to be part of your firm and not just pushing paper um, or an administrative person that's on the side that, that doesn't matter. They don't want to be a cog in the wheel. They want to be an integrated part of your team. So if you have um, annual goals that your firm is trying to achieve, like say, for example, we'd like to win two Texas Star Awards this year, or um, I'd like to um, book X number of brides for 2016. You know, help them to own some of those goals and break it down and say, okay, well, how can you um, help us in winning awards? Maybe it's your help us with the writing part of um, the award submissions or proofreading them or helping us collect the photographs from, you know, these weddings so that we can submit our work. These are the ways that you empower them and get them part of the conversation. And not only that, giving them tangible skills that they can use later down the line. Okay, so one thing I wanna say is that I found that the most important thing that you can give a millennial is to share your vision that you're going to provide them long-term and continual training all the way through. And you know, that demonstrates your investment in them. They're again, not just a number to you. They're not people that are, are gonna get all your admin work done that you, you treat as workhorses and throw away the next day. These guys are important. And especially when you're working in a small business where say it's one or two people there, if you bring on three interns, you've now doubled your team. And so it's so important to us as your supervisor that we pick the right people from day one to work with us. So you have to offer them training and development. And you also have to offer them a clear career path. If it's an internship, it's for that three months, then yes, a, a path of what they are to accomplish and what you'll help them um, achieve while they're there. Or if they're an employee, like looking at the long term, where are where is this taking them um, so that, that they see that path and they see their future with your firm. And as always, ongoing coaching and feedback is so incredibly important. And that goes two ways, I should say. Um, millennials, don't be afraid to give advice and, and feedback to your supervisor as well. Um, we're, you know, in this as, as well as you are. And so if there are things that maybe you can reverse mentor and teach us, um, whether it's, you know, blogging or social media marketing or coding or, you know, whatever unique skill that you bring to the table as well, don't be afraid to, to speak up and, and give a little bit of that ongoing coaching back to your supervisor as well. And 
you know, bottom line, don't believe the hype. Um, you know, I feel like there's just a ton of articles and videos out there that say millennials are lazy and entitled and they're job hoppers and they don't, you know, they don't stay in a job for more than a year or two. And, you know, I hate to say it, but if you look back in history, when the Gen X generation was in their early 20s, um, you know, the movie that comes to mind is Reality Bites or Slackers or any of those. So I think that there's always some some kind of generation bashing that happens when you're in your early 20s that, oh, they're just lazy and they don't know what they want to do with their life. I just would encourage you guys um, to not believe the hype. I think that there are some incredibly gifted and talented go-getters out there in the millennial generation, and it's all about hiring the right people from the right get-go. And side note, the Apprentice Program has a blog of um, lots of tips on how to interview and uh, look for the right person um, via their resume or interviewing tips when you're meeting them face-to-face. -face. So I encourage you guys to go check out our blog. It's it's theapprenticeprogram.com forward slash blog. Okay, I'm team talking. Is there any questions so far, Aubrey? I'll take that as a no. We'll hold on the questions until afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to move right on to uh, five tips for millennials. There was, there was. Sorry. Oh, there was. There okay. <laughs> Yeah, I can hear you. I'm so sorry. Okay, so we actually had a, a really good question. Um, Ronald had asked a question. If uh, if each one person company has three to five interns at a time, will we have an oversupply of planners soon? So that's kind of a unique question. Do you have an opinion on that? I think that's a great question. I think what the reality happens is that there will be people that will retire from being event planners um, that kind of come off the the top end of that the the total number of planners out there. And I think that that younger folks, after they get about three to five years of experience under their belt, might go off and say, "Hey, I can do this on my own. Maybe I'm going to go off and start my own event planning company." So what I find is that yes, the the number of event planners have certainly grown over over the last 20 years. I mean, gosh, if you looked at the numbers of how many event planners there were in the States in the early 80s, I would be willing to say that they were probably in like the 40 or 50,000 range. Um, so it certainly is growing, but I, I don't think that there is going to be an over um, or an influx of too many event planners in the market. Um, you know, I, I was always surprised by the fact that in Austin, Texas alone, that there are easily 70 reputable event planning firms in that town. And Austin's not that huge. I mean, it's maybe a million people population wise. Um, but in all in all, you think, gosh, how can a city handle that many event planners in one place. Um, but I think the reality is that there was always enough business. So think about it. There's corporate events, social events, kids events, concerts, festivals, public events, nonprofit. I mean, it, live events are not going anywhere. And I think that you, you wouldn't have to worry about there being too many event planners in the market. Right. I think just to add to that as well, I think, you know, over the years, the industry has has really evolved even in the educational offerings. It's seen more as a uh, as a legitimate career path than it was X number of years ago where universities and schools are now instituting, you know, programs and degrees um, related to this particular profession. And I think there's going to be a lot of, um, well, kind of survival of the fittest, but also, you know, cream of the crop rises, right? So, you know, even having students such as SEPA students, having these internships, getting that mentorship, that's even going to set them, you know, apart from their peers um, in the industry as well. Absolutely. I'm going to hold off. There are some others, but I think it could go on total tangents and I'm okay. going to wait until the, the Q&A. Keep going. You're doing okay. awesome. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to switch over to five tips for millennials. Um, and, you know, I really didn't want to give you anything that was too cliche or, you know, but I just really want to talk from the heart for you guys. Um, being a mentor myself and have mentored, you know, gosh, 70 plus uh, millennials over the years, uh, you know, in my own company in the simplifiers. Um, here's what I found were the bright, shiny stars and what worked for them. First and foremost, show up and step up. Um, I, uh, when I hire interns every semester, I like to actually hire anywhere from three to five people. Um, and the reason behind that is I don't actually hire just one or two interns every semester because I find that 
as a group, you learn from each other as much as you learn from me. Um, so whenever I hire interns, I look for a varied um, background of experiences. Maybe one person's from nonprofits, another person's got lots of um, hospitality experience and you know restaurant management or uh, bartending or things like that. Um, another person might be really into design and floral. So I find that if you hire people with varied backgrounds that are green but are willing to learn and show up and step up um, to the plate, that makes for such a great opportunity for you as a learning experience, but also for the, the firm as well. Um, you know, just I find that those, those guys that step up to the plate are the ones that get the most out of their uh, experience working for our company. And stepping up also means asking questions, um, not being afraid to ask questions. Um, and I think that that's a, an important one. Um, I think that sometimes event planners, we, we tend to talk fast, we move faster, and you know, there's a lot of event work on, on our plate sometimes. Um, you know, and, and imagine if these one or two person firms are producing anywhere from 30 to 50 events a year, um, they've got a wedding almost every weekend. Um, so they are go, 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 going. And it can be really intimidating sometimes if you're working for them and you think, oh, I don't really want to slow down and ask her about this and I'll look really stupid if I ask this question. I just encourage you guys during the work week in the office, don't be afraid to ask questions and also don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, like I said earlier, if you make a mistake, it's a great opportunity for you to learn and you have to own fixing them. So, you know, this is a hard one for, again, us uh, event planners as control freaks. We cringe when you make mistakes, um, but we know, the good ones know, that those are the opportunities for you to really, really learn. So let's say, for example, you send an email to a vendor and you call them the wrong name, and they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> or um, let's say that you sent the wrong document to a client and, you know, it, again, full of spelling errors. Like, these are opportunities for you to really, you know, kind of go back to the client and say, gosh, I'm so sorry about that. I should have spell checked that. Let me send you those meeting minutes one more time. Um, and, you know, just own it. I think it, it's a it's a huge part of, um, you know, the learning curve as we, in the events industry. And by the way, we make mistakes all the time. <laughs> so don't, don't think that you're not the only one. Like, uh, I've been producing events for years and years and years. I learn something at every single event. So I, I learn, yeah, it's okay to make mistakes. Um, I encourage you guys, if you are still in college, um, to in expand your network by interning. Um, and you might think, gosh, being an intern, it's sort of below me, or just it's it's going to be a bunch of uh, busy work, and it's going to be really lame, or I'm just going to be moving chairs around at events. Like, what am I going to learn there? And I have to encourage you, like, when you are an intern um, for an event planning company, you learn so much. Um, and yes. There is a large part of our very unglamorous job, which is moving tables and chairs from one side of the ballroom to the other or um, sloshing around in mud because the, the rain plan tent started to flood or whatever happens. And you've got to be fast on your feet. Um, and so that's your learning opportunities. Um, and no work is beneath us as event planners. If we have to hold the girl's dress while she is going to the bathroom, we will do it and we will do it with a smile on our face. Um, but I encourage you guys that when you're interning, um, and especially when you're interning with the simplifiers, you meet a lot of people. You meet a lot of vendors, a lot of venues, a lot of photographers, and you know, just building your network that way um, and getting connected because you never know who you might meet on site at a job that might lead you to your next job. Now, I want to encourage you guys this, and this is a little tough love. Rewards are given on results not effort. So um, I was just past the generation um, where everybody got a, a trophy at the soccer games. Like mine was like, you know, I think mo like two thirds of the team got trophies, but you know, not everybody did. And you know, I think that's, that's an important analogy. I think um, I'm a parent myself and I see it very rampantly with, um, you know, children's sports for my kids. And I just think that um, it's, a bit silly, let's be honest. Rewards are given on results. So if you're given a goal um, to hit, um, and it's reasonable, you know, like a smart goal, uh, it's specific, measurable, um, attainable, 
uh, you know, time related, all of those things, then, you know, you both agree on it and you work your butt off to get to it. And then, then that's where rewards come in, whether it's a bonus or whether it's um, sending you to another training development workshop or, um, you know, other kinds of incentives that help you kind of push along and, um, you know, help you achieve your personal career goals as well as the company's goals as well. And last but not least, this sounds so Captain Obvious, but I think it's a really important one to say out loud. Never, ever check your phone at an event. Um, and here's why. Clients see you on your phone and they think you're texting. And now you may have good intentions where you pulled up your um, production schedule or timeline on your phone through Dropbox and you're thinking, man, I'm really savvy here and I'm checking my timeline. I'm supposed to see what I'm doing next at the wedding. But everybody else sees you as texting and they, that drives them absolutely nuts. So I always encourage my team, um, if you uh, have to have your timeline or production schedule on, on a device, put it on your um, tablet or print it out on an old-fashioned piece of paper in a binder. Um, but when they see you on your phone, they think you're not working and people get annoyed. Okay. So the other thing to tell you about is see every task and every single event as a learning opportunity. You know, when you're an intern or you're just starting out at your career, you're really there to gain tangible skills in the event industry. And every moment helps you build your network with those vendors and planners that you meet on sided events. Um, everything is done calm, cool, and collected. Um, I preach that from day one with my team, and they're really, really good at that as well. Because when you start freaking out, it ripples effects out to everybody. So you as the wedding planner or assistant or even intern shadowing along, if you start um, your body language showing that you're you're nervous or your your heads, your fore, your brows like furrowing and <laughs> you uh, might have resting bitch face, like any of those things, you just don't want to do that um, because they read your body language and they think, uh-oh, something's not right, something's going wrong. Vendors see it the um, other team sees it and the clients and their guests see it. So I encourage you guys, calm, cool, collected. And, you know, obviously every task, every event, it's helping to progress your career along. So you might go into it thinking, gosh, I really want to be a wedding planner. It's my dream in life. And, I, and you start to intern at a wedding planning firm and you realize, oh, my God, this is a whole lot more work, like manual labor work than I ever anticipated. I just really like the design side of it. And then you go, huh, okay, maybe next semester I'm going to intern with a florist and see if I can get my hands on the floral side of, of design. And you kind of work through that and you go, oh, yeah, I don't really like that either. Uh, maybe actually I like the marketing side of events. And that's where it helps you learn like where what facet of the events industry is most exciting and perfectly fit for you. So you just never know until you get your hands into it and you, you try out everything. And most importantly, when you're committed, it shows it to your supervisor. So every task done to the highest level quality and, you know, you hit deadlines. You've got to hit deadlines that are set. And if you think you're not going to hit a deadline, let your supervisor know as soon as possible so she, he or she can give you the support you need. But if you give your dedication to every task and every event with a smile and it shows your supervisor how committed you are and how you, again, fit into the long term term picture of working with that firm. And on the same side of the coin, I don't believe the hype. Um, you know, when it comes to generations and, and how Gen X is very different from millennials or baby boomers and all of that, yes, some of that stuff is true, but I would encourage you guys and challenge you guys to think about this. Some Gen Xers are actually more tech savvy than you might give them credit for. Um, so, you know, don't feel like you're, you're having to sort of dumb it down for them um, when it comes to blogging or meta tags or, you know, using Periscope or any of that. You might be quite surprised to find that uh, some of us actually know what we're doing. Um, second is 
meetings with strong agendas are actually worthwhile. <laughs> um, while I will say this to the employers that are listening on the call, keep your meetings at one hour or less. Um, I encourage you, if you can do a standing meeting, that means where everybody's got their laptop and they're standing, not sitting around the table, do it. I, it will keep you on your toes and, and keep the meeting nice and short. Um, but if you have a strong agenda for your weekly team meeting, like this is what we're going to talk about, we're not going to deviate from this, um, you know, and knock it out, your team will see the value in, in having those weekly team meetings and, uh, that are there for training. And millennials, can I just encourage you to think about this, that boundaries on work hours are actually a good thing for our clients. And here's why. You don't want to be texting a bride at 10 o'clock at night on a Tuesday about the color peach. <laughs> well, actually, maybe you would. But, you know, to be honest, if you start doing that, then you open the floodgate for her to go, oh, she's awake. Well, let's talk about Peach. I really want to talk about this. And I just don't know if the cupcakes are the right color because they don't match the bridesmaids. And then you've opened it and it's it's game over for you then. So if you want to create some sort of boundaries over how many hours you work with brides in particular, uh, let's say they've purchased your month of package and you've only allocated 20 hours to work on that job, um, you know, total. And all of a sudden you're texting with her at 11 o'clock at night, every little bit of that adds up. So I just encourage you guys, even though you may not want to work in strict work hours, keep boundaries and office hours. I did that with like quotes in the air there, office hours, um, with your clients, very strict. That creates healthy boundaries with them. Okay, any questions? That was awesome. <laughs> yes, um, we actually have tons of questions. There's no way we're going to get through all of these questions, but I'm going to try and get through as many um, as we can. So thank you to everyone who's been blowing up the event wall with your awesome, awesome questions. There are a couple of things that um, it, I took a ton of notes uh, that I highlight and kind of wanted to go back and kind of um, you know hit on for just a second. So you talked about, you know, allowing your your interns or your employees to own things and also it be okay for them to make mistakes um can you gave me also you know the example of the shit sandwich and how to do that can you give an actual <laughs> example of you know maybe a time when you have had to not reprimand but had to take this approach with um one of your employees or with one of your interns an actual specific example yeah um I, let me think about that. I, I think that, um, it, you know, it really depends on the severity of issues. Like there are little things that you, you know, people just sort of need a course correct on that so that they don't repeat it over and over again. Like say, for example, um, you know, we've got, um, a gal who was working with us this summer. Her name is Chloe. She's amazing. She's on our, our, um, marketing team, uh, here in the UK. And when we were writing blog posts, she would kept you know, like we have a feature on our blog that says, um, you know, like features previous apprentices. And she would say, ex apprentice Paula or ex apprentice Jordan. And I'm like, ex apprentice sounds like we've, we've broken up with them. And that just seems weird. <laughs> so it's like, it's just little things like, hey, let's call them former apprentice or, you know, something like that. Cause, you know, just that, that terminology and that, that language doesn't quite compute. Now, um, she's British, so things don't necessarily translate to Americans. So she didn't quite understand it. Um, and I, you know, just trying to approach her with some honest feedback. Um, that's a little thing, right? Um, you know, but let's say, for example, and we've had this happen before years and years ago, where uh, one of my wedding planners showed up 30 minutes late to a, a wedding. And, you know, vendors are sort of standing on site at the venue, like, where's the lead, you know? That's not acceptable. So, you know, when I, as soon as I heard about that, um, you know, really course correcting that as soon as possible, um, you know, calling her the day of the wedding, saying, hey, where are you? What's going on? You know, are, is, has something happened? Are, are you in a car wreck? Like, you know, do I need to come down there and, and step in? Or, um, you know, and, and also just sort of course correcting and talking to the team on Monday at our team meeting of like, how important being 
timely is to, you know, clients hire us for a reason. So I, I think that, you know, it really depends on the severity. I, I think that these kinds of conversations happen one on one, not in a team setting. So you don't publicly shame people. Um, you just, you know, pull them aside and, and give them honest feedback. Perfect. Perfect. Um, talking about you know, the millennial generation and loyalty. I mean, we've seen the statistics about on average millennials will stay in a particular job for one to three years. And I know that, you know, you're wanting to, um, you know, squash that. I think there are a lot of examples and things that you have tips that you've given in today's webinar on what employers can be doing and even what millennials can be doing to secure mm -hmm. and in a position for um, a little bit longer and, you know, making them feel empowered and not a cog in the wheel. Um, mm -hmm. what, what is kind of, I guess, would you say is the number one thing out of that in, in making sure that, that they stay or, yeah. or is that a concern for you as, as an employer? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that if you look at it from a millennials point of view, you're just exit out of college with a boatload of debt right? So you guys have more debt out of college than I did when I graduated 15 years ago. So I get it. Like <laughs> you've got $50,000 of debt that you need to pay off. And oh yeah, it's really hard to buy a house these days that you need a good paying job. And by the way, the events industry doesn't really pay very well, right? So I mean, on, on one side of the coin, I totally understand why one would want to job hop, hop to get to some place that has a better salary or a better hourly rate um, but I think that what I found um, the people that were most loyal to the simplifiers were the ones that saw the big picture and saw how long-term um, a commitment on my side to help them in their career and professional development um, and how they really were integrated into the company's overall goals um, makes such a huge difference. It comes back to what I was talking about in the beginning of like having a sense of purpose and a sense of, of meaning um, and, you know, really believing in your, you know, what your firm is doing. Um, you know, and, and I have also read quite a few studies and correct me if I'm wrong, Aubrey, or anybody else. Like I find that millennials also really want to see how you're positively impacting the world. Like you're not just doing some throwaway thing that's making a bunch of money and you're driving a Mercedes while I'm over here, you know, in a crap beater car, you know, like I want to see how, how we as a company are really positively impacting the world and how I fit into it in a long-term vision. I agree with that hundred percent. And I remember, um, I actually learned this in high school and um, kind of a total tangent story, but just to kind of give you an example. And um, I lived in Dubai and, uh, we had one of the managers of the water park there come and they talked to us about their employees and they mm -hmm. asked us a question as students. They're like, what do you think is the number one requirement we look for in the people that we hire? And we're all like, um, they need to know how to swim. Duh. And he said it was actually the opposite of that. He said they look for people who don't know how to swim because they can teach them how to swim. And as a result, because of giving them that, that, you know, learning and that training, um, they're more loyal to them. And I think that also, I know in leaving my first job out of college, I, I felt that loyalty because they were the first company that really took a chance on me. And, and they also taught me a lot of the things that, that, um, I learned. So I think I, I really challenge businesses in the event industry um, to make sure that you do have that game plan, that you do have a vision, you do have goals, and, and you can incorporate people in that, and, and make sure that you take that time to train them. Um, I think yeah. a lot of companies, you're so busy, as you mentioned, you've got crazy schedules, all these weddings and events going on that you really don't, you need the help, but you don't really have the time to mentor. Mm -hmm. And I should say as a side note that a lot of times these one and two person event planning firms, they also have a list of about 20 event assistants that are paid hourly um, that they call upon for event assistant work when events come up. So while they may not be on full time payroll salary, there's opportunities, I think, a lot of times to ha be on that list after you've interned or, you know, with a company um, so that you're the trusted go to for future events. And that may grow into something bigger uh, eventually absolutely absolutely talking real quick you you hit on reverse mentorship and I talked mm -hmm. to so many 
students, um, especially those in, you know, still in college who just don't know what value they have to bring to the table. Can you explain just a little bit more about what is reverse mentorship and how can the millennial generation, um, what are some of our strengths in general that you see advantageous for business owners that we could potentially be giving them or offering them? Totally. I, I mean, well, I think it, it, you'll find it really quickly with when you're interviewing with a company, if the, the supervisor that you could, you know, your future boss, if they get it or they don't get it. Um, but the ones that get it, they're so smart because there is so much that I don't know. Let's just be real. Okay. Um, I'm 37. I don't know everything and I learn something every single day. And so what I find that my team teaches me a lot of times, um, and I, you know, I'm pretty savvy when it comes to tech stuff, but you know, I'm still learning is coding. You know, like it, it seems so silly, but our generation did not learn how to code in school. Um, and your generation kind of started to learn how to code, but boy, howdy, kids that are like 15 to 18 year old right now blows me away. Like, I'm like, what? Um, so just even simple things like that, coding on websites for blogging, um, meta tags, um, using hashtags for your advantage when it comes to Instagram to build your following. Um, you know, just thinking about those kinds of social media marketing tools, I found I've learned a lot in along the way um, from the millennials that I've worked with. Um, but it's also soft skills. Um, you know, I think that, um, I should clarify that the ones that were go-getters and the ones that were really just had a drive and passion that, that have worked for me over the years um, have incredible skills in customer service that I, I just, I think it's always amazing when I, I meet those kind of shining stars um, that have maybe worked in restaurants for years and years and years and you think, oh, it's a throwaway job that I did in college, whatever. But the ones that really like knew how to take care of people I mean, that's exactly what you want in an event planner. Um, so I just find, when I find those people, those people are amazing. And they, they set the tone for the rest of the team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I also wanted to, um, to kind of mirror something that you had said. You had talked about how, you know, the generations that came before the millennials, honestly, we do carry, we have a lot of the same characteristics of, you know, people that just that age bracket in general. And I wanted to refer everyone, there was an awesome TED talk, um, which is titled Millennials, Why They Are the Worst. And it basically, that's the punchline of the whole presentation. And it's really, really cool to see how through the years, the same kind of headlines, New York Times, everything of how they would describe those generations at that point in time were almost identical. Um, so I highly recommend that, um, that you guys watch that. Also, on the reverse of this, you know, we, we hit a lot on what do businesses look for in the people that they're going to be hiring. What should the students themselves be looking for in the companies that they may intern with? Mm, great question. Um, you know, a lot of times with event planning firms, they might not actually have a physical office space. You might be meeting in a coffee shop or weekly team meetings. I know certainly in my er early parts of, of the simplifiers, yeah, we were meeting in Texadelphias or anywhere that had Wi-Fi, you know, before we had an office space. So don't think um, twice about that or think, oh, well, they're not an established company because they don't have an office space. You know what? They're probably a smart company because they're, they're running it lean and they're, they're keeping their overhead as low as possible as they grow their business, you know, wisely and, and, and with a plan. So don't, don't judge on that. Um, but, you know, I mean, I would encourage you to look to your leaders. So, um, you know, people that are SCPA professional members, um, that used to be students, those people are going to get it. Um, they're they're going to be great people to potentially work for. Um, look to see if they, um, you know, look on their LinkedIn and see who has wrote, written nice things about them, like recommended them on LinkedIn, either were clients or people that had worked with them in previous jobs, because you'll be able to find some great details on LinkedIn that you're like, oh, interesting so that person worked with that person and then that's why she liked working with them blah 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 great attention to detail or always on top of her stuff you know um i think that gives an insight that you know maybe you don't see necessarily when you meet them for the first time so do enough stalking on, of us as, as we do of you like google search us you know like uh see what comes up on it 
Absolutely. And is there any, if you had to choose one to two specific questions that maybe when you were in interviewing prospective interns that they asked you that you thought was a really great question to ask, um, even maybe something about setting expectations of, you know, themselves, you know, what they would be doing. Mm -hmm. is there an example of something you'd recommend they ask? Yeah. Um, one question I, I always think is, is great, well, obviously, is, um, you know, just understanding, like, when you ask us, what, what are your goals? Like, what does the company hope, where does the company hope to be in the next five years? Um, and that really kind of, you know, sparks me and goes, oh, you're really thinking about it. You know, one thing on a side note is that I'll ask the question to an intern or to a millennial, I'll say, hey, what do you want to do in five years? And if they say, oh, I want to go off and do this somewhere else, some, you know, in some other city, and they're not like, want to be with me, I'm like, oh, I see, <laughs> side note. Um, but no, I, I think asking asking the potential future supervisor, um, you know, what, what do you guys want to accomplish? Um, and, um, you know, ask them, why do you want to hire interns um, right now like and I think that that shows a lot of guts and shows a lot of insight of just sort of understanding what the the company culture is like um, and don't be afraid to ask like about like mission statement or vision statements um, and don't be surprised if a lot of people don't have them figured out yet absolutely and I want to also emphasize a point that you made about you know, I think a lot, based on my experience with SEPA, a lot of our students can be very uh, quick to judge the opportunities that are available and mm -hmm. rule things out um, without actually trying them out. And I think, you know, you you mentioned about, you know, it's it's almost just as advantageous doing an internship or even just volunteering day of and finding out that you don't like something as it is actually finding out that you like something. It's, it's as helpful. Um, so I encourage, you know, all SCPA members and just anybody looking to get into the events industry, it's not a cakewalk getting into the industry at mm -hmm. all. You know, so you really need to take advantage of every opportunity that you have as you're, I, I know I have it written down somewhere in my pages of notes, but about, you know, taking everything as a learning opportunity. It truly, truly is that. Um, so I think that's brilliant. One of them, um, my last questions, and I apologize, we're going a little over time. Um, you mentioned about, you know, giving, you know, giving your best, you know, shot and your hundred percent, you know, um, to, to your supervisor and to that company during that time where you're having that internship. Um, mm -hmm. How, essentially, I guess what I want you to hit on, I'm trying to, how do I phrase this question? Um, at the end, the end goal for a student in getting, you know, and doing an internship is typically either to get a potential position with that company or mm -hmm. at minimum to get some referral or some sort of reference. So can you speak to that about why it's so important that you really give 110% so that you can, at the end of it all, get some sort of reward? that's your reward, right? And and have you ever done that for anyone who's worked for you? Yeah, so one thing that's very important to know is that in the United States, if you have unpaid interns, it's actually illegal to um, offer any sort of promise of future employment for in exchange for unpaid work. So just be really, really clear on that, employers. Um, you can't say to an intern, hey, you work the next three months unpaid, you might get a job at the end. It's actually illegal um, as per the U.S. Department of Labor. Side note. Um, but, um, I, you know, what I always recommend with my interns when I'm um, hiring people is I actually have them sign a commitment form that just says, like, this commitment means that the internship begins on this date and it ends on this date and you're going to stick with it through the whole thing and here's the things that we're going to offer you training and blah 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 and here's the things that you know like what we expect from you and be really clear on sort of that that write up so that everybody is aware of sort of like this is serious um, and we both take it seriously. Um, but I think that um, what I always encourage and tell people from the interviewing process to day one of working with us is that you're going to get great training and we want you to be able to walk away at the end of this um, semester with tangible portfolio experience. Like you can show another employer and say, hey, I worked on this event and I produced this budget and I made this timeline. Um, and I think that that's really important because it gives you tangible skills that you can get um, hired later down the line, either with us or with somebody else. Absolutely, absolutely. Where can businesses go to find out about 
uh, we're not going to dive into legal, but where can they go to get those resources? Do you have a? Yes. So let me flip back to my screen and see if I can do that real quick. Um, so let me know. Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. So the apprentice program is our online training tools for wedding planners to train their interns. Um, so that's brought to you by the simplifiers. So if you wanted to go to our website, theapprenticeprogram.com, we've got a great blog. We try to blog um, at least three to five times a week. Um, and there's lots of great resources online there, um, specifically on what you can and cannot do when it comes to unpaid interns in the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, and, you know, just lots of information on all of that. And we're continuing blogging. So if there's any questions that you guys have, please feel free to email us or tweet us and say, hey, I really want to know about this. Um, and we'll blog about it. So just to let you guys know that. Um, you know, there, it, you can also Google search U.S. Department of Labor unpaid interns and find a wealth of information there. Trust me, loads and loads of stuff. But if you don't want to read through all that, just go to our website and we'll cut through the fat for you. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps. Absolutely, and I think that's a great segue into the promo that we currently have. Would you like to, as kind of the cap uh, for this evening, to kind of talk a little bit about the Apprentice Program and how that can be advantageous, uh, not only for our student members who participate, but also wedding businesses or, or event businesses in general who, um, who would like to bring on SPA interns this fall? Sure. Well, and thanks again, guys, for having me talk tonight. Um, I really, really appreciate the opportunity. So the Apprentice Program is, is a real passion of mine. Um, we started it actually eight years ago as our in-house training program for the simplifiers, and we've mentored 70-plus people over the years who have gone on and done amazing things with their careers. So it's always exciting. Like a mother hen, I, I'm so excited to see <laughs> you know what they're up to and doing out there in the world. So finally, we launched it um, earlier this year to the public so other wedding planning firms can use our tools um, to train their interns and what the brilliant beauty of it all is that it's a six-week onboarding course which means the first six weeks of working with interns you get them on board as quickly as possible with how you plan weddings. So we provide you with all the tools you need. Weekly spark videos that spark conversations between you and your interns, training on like budgets or planning timelines or what to expect on site as an event assistant, you name it. We also provide homework missions and intern report cards to give them feedback that they need it's your feedback that you're providing just through our tools. And we also provide support for you as a mentor so you can get better at what you do, um, providing the support that they need. So what we're doing is we are offering um, free training uh, tools. So if you hire a SCPA intern for the fall semester and use the promo code that you see on the screen now, SCPA sent me, we'll actually give you the apprentice program for free for that one intern this semester. But you gotta sign up by September 30th um, this year. Um, and you can start the program at any time. That's the beauty of it as well. So if your interns aren't going to start for another couple of weeks, bonus. So go to theapprenticeprogram.com, write down that promo code so you can use it, and make sure to sign up by the 30th of September. Absolutely. Mary, I just cannot thank you enough for the wealth of information that you have shared on tonight's call. I'm so excited that others also get to, to hear your bubbly voice and your personality and you're just you're you're just you just cut straight through it and you're so upfront and we I love that about you. Um we had so many more questions. I apologize to anybody who asked a question that we weren't able to get to, but I think uh, all in all, so many questions were asked, and you did a phenomenal job answering all of them. Thank you so much um, on behalf of the Student Event Planners Association, all of our members, and everyone who's tuning into this webinar or watching the recording later. We thank you guys as well for tuning in. And of course, everything that Mary said, definitely go check out the Apprentice Program website, learn more about them. The blog is absolutely fantastic. I mean that sincerely, so do check that out as a resource. Um, and Mary, Thank you. It is probably one o'clock <laughs> now or midnight. It's one o'clock your time. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And All right. Thanks again for having me. And let's continue the conversation on Twitter. So yeah, just let me know whatever I can answer. I'm more than happy to be a resource. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great night. Bye.